first you just need to learn ln 5x is equals to y okay so i can write it as 3y squared plus 2y minus 1 equals to 0 factorize it 3y and y 1 and 1 so 3y minus 1 equals to 0 3y equals to 1 y equals to 1 over 3 or y plus 1 equals to 0 then y equals to negative 1 Okay, once you get this, don't forget to sub it back in. I can say that log 5x equals to 1 over 3. If you want to move log, it will be exponential. So x is 1 over 5 exponential 1 over 3. That's your first answer. Okay, second answer. Log 5x is equals to negative 1. I can say that exponential negative 1. And x equals to 1 over 5 exponential negative 1. Or I can also write it as 1 over 5 exponential. Up to you how you want to write it. Uh. Okay, second question. Okay, as what I mentioned here, yeah, okay, for sine graph, A is your amplitude. Okay, B right is how many graphs in 360? Or I have another formula for B, which is T, the new point divided by O pointer. Okay, and C, right, is my shifting babies. Okay, let's look at this graph. My graph, what is my amplitude? 4 to 7. So, amplitude is 3. Yeah. Done. Okay, next. For B, can you see, can you tell me how many graphs in 360 degrees? You, can you see that there's only half the graph? until 360 degree okay so half the graph the graph but that's echo okay so half the graph until 2 pi so b is just half cf is shifting at first your graph start from zero right now it start from four so shifting is plus four let me show you how to use this formula new point over point uh. okay very easy your new point right can you see that this is your new point which is at 2 pi Okay, but O pointer, if you sketch a sine graph out, right, the no original sine graph, uh, my formula is O point over new point. Okay, so you can also mention that B is then equals to O point is pi, new point is 2 pi. Pi pi cancel, 1 over 2. Done. 3 marks, you don't need to show any working for this. No working is required, as long as you got the point right, you get 1 mark. Okay, I've, okay, let me draw it out. A, B, whoo. Okay, this is your AB. The point C with coordinate 7 and 8 lies on perpendicular bisector of AB. So I have another point here which is C and this 7 and 8 and they say it's perpendicular bisector. What do you mean by perpendicular bisector? Here you cut it and make a 90 degree. And they ask you to find the value of A. Okay, so that's not hard. First, start. Please tell me what is your gradient of AB which is 14 minus 6 over 2 minus minus 4. 14 minus 6, 8. 2 minus minus 4, 6. So, 4 over 3, that's your answer. Okay, then second step. Can you tell me what is my gradient of perpendicular first? My m put right is just negative 1 over m e d right? So, which is negative 3 over 4. That's it. I got it already. Okay, nice. The point C with coordinate 7, 8 lies on the perpendicular bisector of AB. Okay, what is the perpendicular bisector of AB? I know it's negative 3 over 4 already. Then, find the value of A. How do you find the value of A? You know that point A here, this point right, also lies on this line. Right? So, I can say that, right, point... Sorry, uh, my diagram is wrong. This is my midpoint. Okay, this is my perpendicular bisector and C is somewhere here which is 7 and 8. Okay, then after that, right, you need to find your midpoint of AB. Okay, what's your midpoint of AB? Which is negative 4 plus 2 over 2, 6 plus 14 divided by 2. Negative 1 and 10. Okay, so I have the midpoint already. And last, you can plot the perpendicular bisector line, right? Using y minus y1 equals to m, x minus x1. Am I right? Okay, so y minus 10 equals to gradient x minus minus 1. 
y minus 10 equals to negative 3 over 4 x, x plus 1, and plus 1 multiplied negative 3 over 4. y is then equal to negative 3 over 4 x minus 3 over 4 plus 10. y is then equals to negative 3 over 4 x plus 37 over 4. Okay, done. And once you've got your perpendicular find bisector, last step, you just need to find what is your A, right? Find A by substituting x equals to 7. And my y coordinate is 4. A equals to 4. Perfect. Good job. Okay, given that point B also lies perpendicular bisector of AB, find the coordinate of D such that AB bisect the line CD. Okay, point B also lying here. Perpendicular bisector of AB. Okay, find the coordinate of D such that line AB bisect the line CD. Okay, so in order for D to bisect it, right? Okay, so these two must be the midpoint of one another. Understand? So these two must be the midpoint of one another. And my C coordinate, I can change it to 4. Okay, next. Look at this part. What's the separation here? You know that point B, uh, midpoint, right? Okay, is equal to point C plus D divided by 2. So, negative 1 and 10 is equal to 7, I put it as X and Y, uh, plus X divided by 2, then 4 plus Y divided by 2. So, what's my coordinate? I can say that 7 plus X divided by 2 is equal to negative 1. 7 plus x is negative 2, x is then equal to negative 9. Then 4 plus y over 2 is equal to 10. So y is equal to 4 plus y equals to 20, y equals to 14, 16. Sorry. So my point D is then equal to negative 9 and 16. Done. Okay. So a x square, x plus b square plus c. Okay, you have two methods of doing it. Uh, one is comparing it, you expand this and compare with this. Another, you can use the computing the square formula and do this. Okay, let's try using this method. Uh. I already taught you guys the computing the square method. Let me show you guys another method which is expanding this. Okay, I will show you how to expand this. Uh. Okay, I'm getting x plus b, x plus b, plus c, right? So when I expand, I will get x squared plus 2bx plus b squared plus c. Eventually, I get ax squared plus 2abx plus a, b squared plus c. Okay, so I can just compare this whole thing. This b. So I know that a is 2. Done. And compare again, I know 2ab is 5. So 2 times 2 times b equals to 5. b equals to 5 over 4. Okay, I know that this whole thing is negative 3. So a, b squared plus c equals to negative 3. 2 times 5 over 4 squared plus c equals to negative 3. c is then equal to negative 3 minus 2 times 5 over 4 squared. 25 over 8. So negative 49 over 8. Okay. I will show you how to do it with the completing the square. Why I don't use completing the square? Because this method is faster and easier. Okay, you can do the completing the square. Let's, let me show you completing the square. So for completing the square, what I can do, I factorize 2 out. And I'm going to get x squared plus 5 over 2x minus 3 over 2. Then you complete it. x plus 5 over 4 squared minus 5 over 4 squared minus 3 over 2. And eventually, you are getting x plus 5 over 4 squared you get negative 49 over 16 and you open it again you get 2 x plus 5 over 4 squared minus 49 over 8 see the same thing 2 the same thing 5 over 4 the same thing negative 49 over 8 and next they ask you for a stationary point remember what do you mean by stationary point stationary point is where is your turning point yeah guys Okay, how do you find your turning point? Right, very easy. Imagine right, I have an equation that that is something like that looks something like this. My turning point is always negative p and q. So in this case, right, my formula is two then x plus five over four square minus forty nine over eight. So my stationary point will then be okay. You negative inside and the outside just remain. 
That's my answer. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the sketching part. Okay, for the sketching part, first you need to identify the trend. Okay, I know that this is a smiley face, so your graph will look something like a smiley face. Me? Okay, then second step is identify my x intercept. My x intercept is happening at y equals to zero. So 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 equals to zero. 2x and x, 3 and 1, negative, negative equals to zero. So x equals to 1 over 2 and x equals to negative 3. So I have one coordinate in it at negative 3. Another coordinate at one point. That's it. Okay. So second step done. What's my third step? My third step is equals to identify my y intercept. Okay. Y intercept is always the last number. So my y intercept is negative two at first. Okay. So this is how my graph will look like. This is how my graph will look like, yeah, guys. But and this is my turning point. And don't forget to label your turning point. My turning point at first, right, it's negative 5 over 4 and negative 49 over 8. And due to the fact that last step, you just need to modulus it. Okay, modulus, how you modulus? You just need to flip it. So this whole part, right, you need to flip it up. Okay, so draw this and flip this point. Okay, so this is my tree and this point, flip it up and you will get negative 5 over 4 and 49 over 8 and finally erase this, erase this, erase, 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 done that's my graph okay for 3 solutions what you need to do right just bring your ruler okay so this whole thing is my ruler right and they say exactly 3 distinct solutions uh, what it tells you it must have 3 intersections okay so you just need to move your ruler up and down and look for 3 intersections you can see that this is 2 then at this point you will see three. One intersection, two intersection, three intersection, and my one is at 49 over 8. So k is equal to 49 over 8. That's it. <laughs> Number five. In question all length are in kilometer, time is in hours, yeah. Okay, put VEA still with constant velocity from position vector 0, 0. After 3 hours, A is at position vector negative 12P, 9. Find position vector OP of A at 5P. After 3 hours, A is at position vector negative 12 and 9. So we need to find the velocity, okay? So your velocity is basically negative 12, 9 minus... 0, 0, divide by 3 because they say 3 hours so your answer is then equals to your velocity will then be negative 4 and 3, 3 hours okay, so this is your velocity vector then, you know, OP right, is equals to the original plus velocity multiplied by time then origin is 0, 0 velocity is negative 4 and 3 time is just 3, that's it okay, next position vector 12, 6 constant velocity negative 5 and 8 so I know that OQ is then equals to position vector 12, 6 plus velocity multiplied by time that's it okay show that magnitude at time t magnitude is equals to 26 square my plus 36 t plus 180 okay how to find PQ first okay so for PQ it's equals to my OP, OQ, minus OP, right? What is OQ? Uh? 12, 6, plus negative 5, 8. Then minus of OP, it's 0, 0, negative 4, T, 3, T. Okay, next. Can you see that this whole thing minus here? 12 minus 0, I will still get 12. Minus 5t minus minus 4t is plus 4t, so minus t. 6 minus 0 is 6. 8t minus 3t is negative 5t. Then you just need to find out the magnitude, which is equal to square root of 12 minus t square plus 6 minus 5t square. Okay, and your magnitude p whole thing square, you can remove the square root and eventually. 12 squared is 144 minus 
12 key, 12 key, 24 key, plus two square, plus six, six, 36, six, five, 30, 30, 90 key, 25 key square. Okay, then I can rewrite it here. So my magnitude of PQ square is then equals to 144 plus 36, 180, negative four. Oh, this is the plus five key, right? Okay, 90 minus 24, this is 60, right? Not 90, right? So 60 minus 24, I'm getting 36 T. T square plus 25 T, 26 T square. So I just need to rearrange it and I'm getting PQ square is then equals to 26 T square plus 36 T plus 1 T. Done. Okay, next, in order for them to show that they do not collide, right, this equation is not solvable. So in order for them to show that they do not collide, right, you can say that your 26 P square plus 36 P plus 180, right, has no new root. In order for you to show it, uh, so your A is 26, B is 36, C is 180, let's show it. Uh, so B square minus 4AC is then equal to 36 square minus 4 times 26 times 180 and I'm getting negative 17,424 so I can say that since my B square minus 4 AC is lesser than 0 no real root so time is not solvable and you can say that no collision okay that's it a progression has first term 10 term and sum to infinity of 6. Find the common ratio of how to do this. Sum to infinity s. Okay, s infinity is equal to 6. Okay, what's the infinity? What's the sum of infinity formula? Has first 10 term. Okay, and first term is 10. Uh, so you know that a is equal to 10. Okay, so I can say that 6 is equal to 10 over 1 minus r. And I rewrite it here, 1 minus r is equal to 10 divided by 6, r is equal to 1 minus 10 over 6, negative 2 over 3. That's it, sexy. Okay, next. Let's find the sum of first 7 terms and give your answer to 2 decimal places. Okay, they ask you to find first 7 terms. Uh. How to find first 7 terms? S7 is equal to... Okay, if you forget the formula, by the way, your n term, you don't need to remember any of the formula because all the formula will be given here, guys. See, all the formula is given here. Okay, so you don't need to remember any of this. Okay, don't need to remember, don't waste your memory. Okay, let me copy and paste my formula here for you guys as a reference. Okay, so S7 will then equal to A and 1 minus R7 over 1 minus R. I know that my a is 10, 1 minus r is negative 2 over 3 to the power of 7, then over 1 minus negative 2 over 3. And just press it in your calculator, 1 minus x to the power of 7 over 1 minus x, calculate negative 2 over 3. And I'm getting, they say 2 decimal place, 6.35. Perfect. 